Hey everybody, my name is Ted Forbes and welcome back to another episode of The Art of Photography. And today I want to cover another vintage camera and we've done a lot of this in the last couple weeks. We've looked at a lot of twin lens reflex cameras or TLR cameras. And what I wanna do is show you something completely different today. And we're gonna talk about a folder camera. Now I did a vlog episode oh, a year and a half ago where I talked about this and we didn't do an up and close and like break it down, but I wanna talk about it today. Now this is a Voigtlander Bessa. And the folder cameras were all medium format and they actually had this trademark of folding down. I say they were all medium format. There were probably some 35s as well. Uh, it was just a style of camera that was being produced. So you can see I have the never ready case here and it is pretty thin. When I open that up, what I do is there is a button to release the bellows and you actually have the lens that pops up that sits on top of a bellows system. And so the way this works is the lens and the shutter are all self-contained down at the end here. There's basically this rack that it sits on that does the folding and then there's a bellows set that's in there. And then your roll film sits in the actual body. So everything is pretty much contained in the shutter. So it's a really interesting camera design, I feel. Now this one is a rangefinder camera. So this is the Voigtlander Bessa and sometimes it's known as the RF, which stands for rangefinder. And basically this has a coupled rangefinder. Not all folders have a coupled rangefinder. So this basically means I have a, uh, a framing lens in the back. So you look through this eye hole and you're going to frame up your shot. But if you look through this one, it allows you the split image. And I'll talk about that when we get into the up close. And you can actually focus your image. It gives you two images and you want to line them up and that's how you actually focus and this is mechanically rigged into the lens on the focus rack here and it actually does couple the focus so you don't have to look through there and then get a measurement and then go find oh this is four and a half feet away or whatever that is um, so it's really a nice feature to have on here so we're going to go up and close on this in a minute but just real quick in case you're looking into folder cameras or in particular the Voigtlander the Voigtlander actually is very confusing because there are two companies that have produced Voigtlander Voigtlander products. There was the original Voigtlander company, which is this one, and they built these uh, in the 30s through probably the late 50s, early 60s. So they started pretty early, um, and these are exceptional cameras, especially for that time period. Um, so that was the first Voigtlander company, and they were made in Europe. The second Voigtlander company, um, there was a Japanese company called Cosina that about 10, 15 years, somewhere in there, about 10 or 15 years ago, they purchased the Voigtlander name. And so they started producing 35 millimeter rangefinder cameras under the Voigtlander name. They're not the same company. And what's even more confusing is they took the original model names and recycled those. I'm not real sure why this made it very, or it makes it very difficult to discern when you're actually trying to look up information online on these, if you're using Google or if you're using eBay, if you're interested in purchasing something, it's kind of hard to do your research because what's what? The Voigtlander Bessa is this, and then there's a 35 millimeter Voigtlander Bessa. Even the lenses, like the Scopars and all, they, they were all kind of interchangeable as far as name goes, but they're not even the same lenses. So it does get very confusing. And so we are talking about the original Voigtlanders here, uh, just to be specific. There were two models of this particular rangefinder. There was the Voigtlander Bessa, which is this one. And then there was a Voigtlander Bessa II, uh, which was a silver look. This one was all black and uh, had some differences um, as far as the shutter and the lens went. Uh, but anyway, let's go up and close with the Voigtlander Besa, and I'm going to show you why I think this is one of my favorite cameras that I own. Okay, so we're going to check out the Voigtlander Besa RF, or rangefinder, and this is an antique camera. These are known as folder cameras, or folding cameras, and right now we're in the folded down position, and this is what I love about this design, is just the portability and the fact that you're combining some of the best elements of medium format and large format into this very compact size, and for its time, it was revolutionary, and like, it's small enough just to carry around. If it's winter and you have a coat with a large enough pocket, you can just slip it in there. It's not very heavy. It's also got a little handle on here if you want to, you know, it by that. I don't really trust it because of the age, uh, but the leather is in good shape on this camera. Um, and I, I just, I, I'm stunned by the level of design that went into this and how many features, when you consider the time these were designed, you know, in the 30s, um, you know, what they were able to pack into a camera. And so right now we're in the folded position. So the lens and the bellows are all underneath this cover here. And so to open that up, there's a little release button on the bottom. And so you're going to push that button. And I love how well this is designed. Watch this come out. I mean, just so well engineered with the way the lens works and the way it folds down and the, the angles and, you know, the hinges and it, it, it's just simply amazing. So what you have here 
is we've got, this is a Scopar lens that I've got on this one. There were, as I mentioned before, several different kinds of lens options you could get. And there were also several kinds of shutter options you could get too. The shutter I have will go anywhere from one second in increments all the way up to one four hundredth of a second. And you do have uh, bulb and timed release as well, uh, which is really nice. And the way this works is you're going to do two things to take the picture. The, everything is self-contained in the lens. Then you have bellows, which simply separate the focal distance to the focal plane back here, and your film is, is housed in the back, and you, you roll it forward by this crank here. I'll get to that in a second. So what you're going to do is two things. You have to cock the shutter and then fire the shutter. So to cock the shutter, you set your shutter speed, and you simply cock it by moving this piece over here. Now it's cocked and ready to go, and the shutter release is on the bottom. It's this, this, little, um, this little hinge right here. So what I do is I move that and that takes the picture. And you can see that actually when I move that down, it's a mechanical uh, crank. The mechanism in here actually physically goes all the way in and has a little dial that's, that's actually shooting a picture for you. So I think it's just amazing. Um, finding these in good condition, if you can find one that's been overhauled and works, they are serviceable. People can repair these these days. And I'm gonna link to a guy who goes by the name Certo 66 uh, on, on the internet and I will, after we're done here, I'll, I'll show you where you can. He actually sells cameras and repairs them both. So if you wanna just buy one that's in good condition, um, you know, a couple hundred bucks will get you a really, really nice camera. Um, so anyway, that's how that works. Also on the lens is this little uh, notch here with the screws in it and that's for a cable release. So if you're doing timer bulb exposure and you wanna use an external cable release to, to fire the exposure uh, that you have that option as well so that's basically uh, very simple but but effective how it works over here on the side here you have your shutter speed where I just move this top dial and it's going to move my shutter speed right now and you have your settings here and then there's a little bottom lever here that changes the aperture and so if I want to go down to f22 I just slide that over here and if I want to go back over to 3.5 which is the largest aperture I can go over here so anyway beautiful design wonderful um, shutter wonderful lens it's it's simply amazing Amazing. Uh, this did take some filters too, I believe. So if you want to use an orange filter, or red filter, if you're shooting black and white, you have that option as well. I don't have the filters, but you can just hold something over the lens. Anything works. And so I'll, uh, if you want to close this down, there's a release here in the bottom and then that makes it go away. And everything is compacted down into just basically maybe two inches of space there. So uh, it's really quite amazing. Now I want to show you the a couple other things on here. When you want to load film, there's a release in here. I simply pop that up and this whole back slides open and you have your red windows for viewing the film on the back and then you just simply pull these levers up, put your spool in there, put your film over on the other side, wind it up, here's your crank, pretty basic and you're good to go once you close the back and then you roll this up so you have two ones in each of these windows and you're ready to go. So you're shooting six by nine. So this is a little different than a lot of people think of medium format as being square and this one is not. It's rectangular. It's a six by nine, not a six by six. So that's um, important as well. And of course you have the obligatory please use our film sticker on the inside. Um, good luck finding any Voigtlander film now. But uh, anyway, that's basically how that works. It uses standard 120 film. Now, the other thing I want to point out here is then this is where this camera is fairly amazing because not all folding cameras of this era had a rangefinder within. So, okay, so you have this camera and it's not through the lens viewing. You don't have a twin lens where you have a viewing lens and a taking lens. So how do you focus? I'm going to go ahead and open this up so we can kind of see how this works here. So go ahead and release that, bring the lens out. Okay. And you also, I failed to mention you have a tripod. So you can mount this on a tripod and you also have a little kickstand. So if you want to set it on a table or something like that, you just simply pull that up, kickstands up, and I can set it on a table, and I'm ready to take pictures. Um, so very cool feature. But back to the rangefinder and the focusing. What this employs is, is a rangefinder. So this is actually split, but it's also important to note that this is a coupled rangefinder. And what that means is you can actually focus through this focusing lens here. And this is the taking lens here. So basically I'm going to use this to frame it up. I can't focus through this lens. I'm just simply using this to frame up my shot. This one, however, is a little bit zoomed in and it uses, there's two lenses on the front. You can see right here and one on the right. And what that does is you're viewing straight through the one that was on the right here. And the one on the left uses a mirror and a prism and a little bit of dye to actually discolor the image a little bit. And what it does is it gives you two images. And to focus, what you do is simply align those images. You'll see like a especially if you're looking at straight lines, you'll see a ghosted image that's over to the left or the right. And so what you want to do is just turn the focus here and you're going to see what happens is physically, it actually, I don't know if you can tell it's doing that, let me bring it all the way in. It's actually moving this lens in and out. And it's also moving the, 
the, um, the rangefinder in there. So when you have those two images lined up, you know you're in focus. And that's really important because a lot of these uh, early rangefinder cameras, uh, you could do the rangefinder, but then you would have to go set the, um, the distance of the lens to the body actually separately, or you'd have to just measure it out in some cases, with the, especially with the earlier cameras. And so that's kind of a big deal. And it also gives you a scale, a depth of field scale all here on the, on the dial, which is kind of nice to have. But you don't have to do math to focus your image. You can just use the rangefinder to do so. So that's what, you know, why we call it the RF or the rangefinder. And that's what a rangefinder works if you've never seen one. There are other very famous rangefinder cameras, a lot of the Leica stuff was all rangefinder. There are rangefinders you can get today. And the company that bought the Voigtlander name, which is Cosina um, out of Japan, uh, some of their models now are rangefinders. And I mentioned that this is, gets confusing because if you're Googling Voigtlander Bessa rangefinder, well, they have a Bessa rangefinder that's a 35 millimeter camera. To make it even more confusing, they now have a medium format version too. They are not the same design, it's not the same company, and they have very little to do with one another um, other than the fact they're both called Voigtlander and they have recycled all of the actual names of the models as well. So anyway, don't be confused on that. But this is this is the Bessa RF. There's an R, uh, Bessa a two as well. There's you know some variations, but uh, this is this is probably one of my favorite antique cameras in my collection. I don't shoot on it often enough, just because the age and all, and I I don't want to wear it out. But uh, so I save it for special stuff. But anyway, that is the Besa RF, and a little bit of an overview on folder cameras. So that is the Voigtlander Bessa, and if you're interested in checking these out further, um, I would recommend, uh, like I said, due to the name recycling that had been going on more recently with these, I think the easiest thing to do if you're interested in folder cameras in general is there's a website that I would check out, and this is uh, Jurgen Krekel's website, uh, and he is a camera repairman and he sells these things. And he has an amazing website that has a lot of in-depth resource on a lot of these folder cameras, um, the different models, the different brands. Uh, it, there's a lot of image examples in there of you know how sharp they are and what they're capable of taking. Um, so check that out. It's Certo6.com. That's C-E-R-T-O-6.com. And that is actually named after another camera, which was the Certo6. Um, I've never owned a Certo6, but they're one of the top of the line uh, folding rangefinders from that day. Uh, but go check that out if you're interested in learning more. Um, Jurgen does two things. He will actually repair cameras. So if you find one that you need uh, torn down and cleaned and repaired and the whole thing, he'll do CL he'll do shutter repair uh, and the like and he's really good um, he also sells these and he sells them on eBay you can buy them through him um, and they're not the cheapest things in the world but he is so good you will get a quality camera when you buy one of those he will not sell you something that's junk so you get what you pay for on those anyway once again guys this has been the Voigtlander Besa and uh, thanks again for watching another episode of the art of photography I'll see you guys next time later